<laughs> so. I'll start the whole thing up. No, not the whole thing. Just uh, I will just do from the beginning of that sentence. That's yeah, all Blair I'm was do. a Canadian mm-hmm. man, yeah. It's hurt for Shire. I believe is how you would say that. I don't know. I'm going to just let you guys say it. I think it's, 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 it's this Britain we're talking about. It's probably Hersher. Hersher. Her for sure. Yeah, Hersher. The Thames, right? Thames. Thames? God, the how? Thames. How do you... Whatever. How do I know that? No, just how does how do you get that pronunciation from that? Because the Brits are f***ed up and uh-huh. they were taught by the, the Romans. I can't wait for that to make the cut into... <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's something on this... Anyway, no, it doesn't Joe, matter. It doesn't Joe, matter. It doesn't, Joe, it doesn't matter. Let's, it's not. It's not major. It's bugging me now. No. We'll figure it out after uh-huh. post podcast. Start your. Intro. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Serious okay. voice. Hey. There we go. Yeah. Hello. Mm. Yes. This is dog. Mm. Okay. Ready? Yes, Walter Concrete. Okay. I was just checking Twitter. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that, I get, oh, stop. Okay. Okay, stop. Let Devin get it. Get yourself good, under control. You good? Okay. Whoa. <sighs> Devin's greatest hits. <laughs> no, I think that's my heart will go on. <laughs> mm. All right, let's get going here. Here, five. Okay. Wherever you are. Okay. Ow. Dogs three counties away are yeah. <laughs> howling because of Joe. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Followed. Bye. Short. <laughs> See, I told you it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> oh, okay. <gasps> All right. I'll st- I'll just do it now. All That's, right. We're fine. good. That's probably enough. At least according to Wikipedia. Right. Which is all the fact checking I'm willing to do. And DeRose revealed that Ireland had been identified as a suspect shortly after the merge of Bridget O'Hara. I just said something very weird. <laughs> she didn't merge get it? merged with no. anybody, Devin. <clears throat> well, hi there. Etc. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. Yeah. I quit. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna start my own podcast. Screw you guys. With yeah. with blackjack and hookers. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, screw the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for all. I'm gonna go professional, be a gambler. There you go. It worked out so well for Lukey. Thinking Sideways is not brought to you by a basket of deplorables. Instead, it's brought to you by your local animal rescue. That's right, dogs, cats, and all kinds of other critters are out there up for adoption, and you need one. And more importantly, they need you. And really, believe me, it's not just you rescuing the cat, the cat or the, or the dog. Uh, that animal is are really going to enrich your life. I know it's enriched all of our lives to have nice little pets, and it will yours too. And hey, if you've already got one, you can always still do something because there's lots more need out there. You can donate money to your local cat and dog rescue, uh, or you can donate your time, meet lots of cool critters, and it's very rewarding, and meet fun people, and you'll really do some good. So, hey, do what you can. Thank you, This is Steve, Devin, Joe, and this is episode number 227 of Thinking Sideways. Whoa. Oh, really? 227. I did not know. Yes. It's episode yes. 227. Well, we call it out every week, but it's really easy to, to kind of miss what number it is. Mm-hmm. And I realize, hey, we're getting up there. What, 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 what do we do every week? Sit what around. About? Talk. Drink. Yeah. What you do. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> like a fish. She drinks for all of us. Water. Water. Yeah. 
No, this week, uh, as every week, we are going to be talking about a uh, unsolved mystery. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And since it's my turn, I decided that I would dig into the old history book and find us a rather old story. Man, this is a meaty tale. It is. Yeah. Uh, this week, we are going to talk about uh, a story that is, God, it's almost almost 150 years old at this yeah. point. And Over it, 150 years old. No, 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 no. It, it happened in yeah. 1876. So not quite. 140 yeah. years. 141. Oh. Yeah. I was just looking at the six. Ah, got it. Yeah. I'm good at math. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this week we're going to be talking about the Kentucky Meat Shower. Uh, and this is a listener suggestion. This was suggested by Blake and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, Blake's the first one that's on the list, but I know yeah. that we've gotten this many, Tons, many times. Because yeah. this is an oldie but a goodie. Oh, yeah. Very popular little story. It's yeah. a fun one. I didn't realize it. I, you know what? Oh, this one was one for... Actually, if you're fun, it's, not, if it's fun if you're not actually there on the spot. Well, yeah, but... And you're not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing, is that you see this story on lists, and it seems like kind of a simple story, and it, whatever and then I actually started cutting into it and found out what was there. I was like, oh, this is good. You mean I'm carving into carving it? Carving into it. Yeah. So let's turn up the heat and let's see what we can make happen. Alright. That was a clumsy pun. It yeah. was. That's not the best. <laughs> but we'll it's get... my week and I'm always clumsy with True. the puns. True. Well, okay. Shall we begin? Let's yeah. Go. Our story takes place on March 3rd, 1876 just outside the town of Olympia Springs, Kentucky. According to reporting at the time, Mrs. Allen Crouch, who, by the way, being a woman, didn't deserve to have her name listed in the official recounting because it's the 1800s and she's a woman, apparently. Because uh, I you, dug you, everywhere and I could not find her first name. Actually, it's Mary. Did you find it? It was Mary, yeah. God, I kept it looking was... and looking and looking and I couldn't find it. It was well, really making me mad. You posted some links about the story. The was sec- it in there? It was. Oh, see, I kept looking. <laughs> the second well, article, yeah. No, because I yeah. kept looking in the old newspaper archives, mm. and I think that's what was throwing me off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, it is Mary Crouch, uh, and she was outside making soap, and she and her husband, Alan, uh, were both in the yard. This is at some time between the hours of 11 a.m. to 12 o'clock. Noon. Noon. Yeah. That's what they call the meeting hour. The meeting hour is absolutely Some places correct. call it chapel hour. Yeah. And they're out there. They're enjoying the day. This is according to the official narrative while they're working. Uh, when suddenly it began to rain. And we don't mean the normal kind of wet rain that you and I know Not all winter long. Rain kind of rain. Right. Instead, yeah. we mean the gross, meaty kind of rain. You yeah. know, the other kind of rain. Yeah. yeah. Like the we get second here. kind. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's there's wet rain. There's hail. And then a, a, apparently, in this story, the next phase is meat. Meat. Yeah. Red rain. So, like the song goes. Yeah. So, all of our vegetarian listeners, you're not going to like this episode. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, according to the official narrative, though, for somewhere between two to ten minutes, depending on the accounting that you read, Mary and Alan Crouch watched as what appeared to be small pieces of meat fell from the sky. Yeah, cool. They described it. Yeah, they uh, (laughs) none of it was bacon though, so it was terrible. Uh, But they described it as being quote delicate shreds as light as a snowflake unquote, while others were quote a solid lump three inches square unquote. Again, this is I've kind of found a bunch of sources to kind of come up with my averages here. But my average size for the material that was falling out of the sky is somewhere is around five by five centimeters, which would convert to about two by two inches, uh, with the largest chunks being somewhere between two and three times that size. So they're already like stew size. You know, yeah, you yeah. Gather them up, put them in the pot, We're talking ready stew to go. meat yeah. falling out yeah. of the yeah. sky at this yeah. point. It's kind of nice. So. Were the Crouches the only people who saw this happen? Yes. 
So they are the only ones to witness the event. There will be others who very shortly show up, but they are the only witnesses that I can find record of. To the meat actually falling from the sky. Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the couple, they watch in amazement uh, in, and probably you know, stupefied as this is happening. Their cat, however, goes into an immediate feeding frenzy. Of course. And uh-huh. runs outside and gorges itself on this sky, sky-filled bounty. And what was the cat's name? Uh, uh, full. Okay. I'm going to say Spoos. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have no yeah. idea what the cat's name was, but the cat yeah. was full. Yeah, <laughs> lucky cat. I mean, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm sure, like your typical farm cat in those days probably didn't get a great diet. So. Oh, it's not, yeah, no, no, it's not like, it, it, you weren't feeding the cat and hoping that it would catch mice. The cat subsisted on whatever it caught, so this mm. was a literal bounty from heaven yeah. for guy. the pud. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the couple, they, they watched this happen. Shortly, one or two people show up at their house, and this is weird because I don't understand why these un- the, in both of the names of these people I can't really find record of. Joe, did you find him? I did not. Dang it. Ah, See? Sorry. See, I screwed up in the first one, not the second one. Yep. Oh. But these people <laughs> show up, and at least one of them actually ate the material that fell out of the sky. I don't know. Would you eat that crap? Oh, I, no. Hell no. Oh, no. <laughs> but th- in this day and me? age, I, you know, we have different sensibilities. But at least one of the people did consume some of the material and said that it tasted like mutton. I, yeah, okay. I, All right. I'll buy that. I'm not willing to say that I would have been above eating that. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, today, oh. yes. In, like, the 1800s. Maybe not. Maybe maybe not. Okay. Yeah. I would just be concerned that maybe there was some human flesh in there somewhere, so I probably... In the 1800s, I probably just would have assumed it was, like, God giving me something beautiful and... Yeah, good point. I'm yeah. kind of like a cat, apparently. Okay. I've just <laughs> been like, yes, me! Obviously, it's intended just for me. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, uh, remember to wave your paw when you need to use the box, and we'll take a break. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> the reporting that I have found, again, the, the numbers are going to vary from site to site that report it, but the meat fell on an area of approximately 100 by 50 feet. Uh, if we convert that to meters, that's going to be 30 by 15 meters. And it coated it pretty, pretty solidly. But by the next day, of course, this material has all begun to spoil. It's, yeah, it's all going was, south, which is not surprising. That was a real disgusting mess. Oh, you yeah. Gotta get off the meat rake. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot imagine. All right. Get up, honey. We got to clean the meat off the fence and the lawn. And the roof. And everywhere. Oh, yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine. Ugh. Ah, screw it. Just let it sit there. It'll eventually dry out. It'll go away. Or the vultures will come get it. Yeah, it's revolting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> local scientists and investigators would come out to the home, and they would collect samples, and they would attempt to preserve them. And what they would do is they apparently they were putting them in jars of glycerin, which um, glycerin is, Joe, help me. I, I suddenly cannot uh-huh. think of what... Gl- that oh. is... Oh, hell, I can't remember either. It's like, I didn't realize, I didn't know, the only thing the listener is going to do is, is keep it from air. Well, yeah, but it's but. also, but that should also then keep it from decomposing mm. because it's, oh, God, I, re- I know they used to use glycerin in a lot of old-timey stuff yeah. as a preservative. All I know is that they still have a few of these samples laying around in jars today, mm-hmm. but those, those are preserved in formaldehyde. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. So, the formaldehyde is going to be, uh, for so, long-term preservation, much better. Yeah, obviously the glycerin didn't re- quite cut the mustard. Yeah, that seems silly. Yeah. Uh, and they're so, still around. I have no idea if they still look like what they used to look like. I, I, but mm, Yeah, I've yeah, seen pictures of them. But, I yeah. don't know that they do, but... Could you... You couldn't test them since they've been in formaldehyde. I, I yeah. would I would say that after a hundred years in formaldehyde, usable DNA has probably been destroyed. Yeah, yeah. I imagine you could probably still take slices, look at the cell structure, maybe get at least yeah, at least determine but, like if it's meat or something else. Yeah, right. You could, right. But, and, and we'll get into some of that in theories because okay. uh, we've got some information on that during the theory section. But for overall preservation, yeah, they they don't. They don't look the same. Obviously, they don't look nice and fresh and pink Mm -hmm. and white like they did on day one Mm. when they fell in Mary and Alan Crouch's yard. Yeah, they're not Twinkies. (laughs) No. No. 
<laughs> Dang it. But they might be what Twinkies were originally based on. You don't know. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the samples would be examined by scientists and a whole slew of suggestions would be made. That was uh, a national story. Yeah, it totally was. And people kept saying, oh, well, it's got to be this. It's got to be that. Uh, I mean, some people said that it was bear meat while other shoe, which is creepy and weird. And yet other people said that it had to be uh, an algae of some sort. Mm -hmm. So there is a huge bevy of theories of what this stuff really was that that showed up in these people's yard. I don't know that if somebody were to just, you know, sit me down and say, taste this meat and tell me what you think it is. (laughs) I definitely couldn't say like mutton necessarily but I mean you know we don't need a lot of mutton I was going to say actually mutton is obscenely distinct. Is it? Yeah I I haven't eaten a whole lot of mutton but I have eaten it Mm -hmm. and it's it's one of those things where when you bite into it and you taste it you know Hmm. Have you ever had bear? I have not had bear. Yeah, so maybe it's the same as bear. Uh, no, bear. Uh, again, bear is one of those gamey animals that is, uh, gamey animals all kind of taste the same as way uh, as well. Mm-hmm. And gamey animals are much different than mutton. It's I don't know how to describe it. I'm not a foodie. Um, That's true. Yeah. I don't know either. I, I if I haven't had muff, mutton in so many years, I've forgotten how it tastes. So it's, I have no idea. It's weird. It's a I, is, is it is it good? No, no, really? No, I don't think it's good. I'm I'm not a fan of mutton. We're gonna get some good emails about that. Oh mm-hmm. well, that's yeah. fine. You know what? I I like to sh- I, I like my sheep sheared. I don't like them barbecued. Yeah. So that's that's fine with me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we've got a PO box. Please send us mutton. No, 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 no. no. Please do not send us mutton. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Send us just jerky or something, okay? Believe it or not, uh, unlike well, actually, this is kind of in line with your last uh, one of your last episodes. the The story was amazingly short, while we had a, a relatively decent uh, section for theories, and we're oh, in one of those hell. again. Com. Oh yeah, was it hell dot com? Mm, I don't know. I don't remember All I know one. is that we're about. 10 or 15 minutes into this, and we are already theories. Yeah. Yeah. Which this is, is weird. Uh, yeah, it is kind of, a, it's it, the actual story itself, but I mean, there was a, a big, you know, aftermath to it because it was speculated on for years. Oh, uh, like a hundred plus. Yeah. Yeah, by scientists and everything. I mean, but especially but still. around the time that it happened, though, it was, it was a, a matter of intense speculation for at least a couple of weeks, a couple of months, something like that. Uh, actually, I think a couple of years. Not because long? there was a couple of scientists who I remember the things that they wrote because they didn't get the, because it took so long for some of them to get the samples that you know I mean, I mean think about it it's 1876 and it takes a long time for a horse to travel across the country mm. to deliver a vial of something for somebody to look at so it actually was years yeah. that this thing continued to have information not necessarily new information but information per se to come out about it did you see by the way that 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 plaque that's along the side of the road somewhere in the, at olympia springs <sighs> What this this sounds familiar, but please refresh my memory, sir. Well, if you go to Google Maps and you type in Olympia Springs, Kentucky, mm-hmm. and then you know pictures on the left, you know, so you click on the picture and it says plaque. Uh, it's a roadside plaque, really nice, like bronze plaque and everything. Mm-hmm. Talks about oh, you know, in this year, you know, the citizens of Lexington came out to what was it called Mud Lick Springs. Mm-hmm. That's what the springs ever called, Mud Lick Springs. <laughs> And, uh, Wait, well, I thought it was cave. Okay, and no, they came out there to escape the cholera world. epidemic or something. And then this year, the Battle of 1812, this happened. And then this year, the ba- this Civil War battle was was fought nearby. But they didn't mention the meat shower at all. Interestingly enough, maybe they're embarrassed about it. I don't know. I was gonna say they're Dude. they're in the meat closet. Yeah, that is just uh, that is just unfortunate. Yeah. So I guess we're ready to talk about theories. Oh, yeah, theories. All right away. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's just do it. dive into theories. All right. Do Throw it. a little butter in the pan and let's see what comes out. <sighs> you've never cooked meat. With I don't butter? think you've ever cooked meat. Is what I'm starting to think. Oh, oh, oh! Wait a second. <laughs> you have never taken a thin <laughs> piece no. of beef and thrown and gotten sizzling hot butter and thrown a, a thin piece of beef in the pan. Of I've course I have. I just keep questioning your insistence that we're just gonna quote see what comes out like you don't know what's going to come out of that pan that you've just put in listen i'm trying to maintain an air of mystery (laughs) here gotcha come on 
Okay. We're a mystery podcast. All right. Theories? Nobody, nobody can smell the aroma of what I'm cooking. Theories? Yeah. It's not that theories. good, though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Theories. Theory number one. Well, this was the in- initial suggestion, is that it was a bacteria. According to a man named Leopold Brandeis, the material was actually cyanobacteria, a.k.a. algae, uh, and this particular algae was known to look powdery and rather unassuming when it was dry, but when it was wet, it would swell up when it came into contact with water. And I think we've all probably seen this kind of stuff because it's weird powdery stuff you'll see on the forest floor around the base of trees sometimes. Uh And then you'll come by and it's this weird kind of whitish gelatinous jelly stuff during a rainstorm. That's the kind of stuff that he's talking about here. Sure. He said that what had actually happened was that this stuff was around the area and all over the property of the the crouches and, and it that just got wet and somehow it got wet this is a little contrary to the story of course because according to the the crouches it was a nice cloudless blue sky day so where'd the water come from yeah, it's also where'd the meat come from? Well, yeah, the uh, I mean, well, the thing about it is, is like uh, if it's been present in their yard, wouldn't this be happening routinely in their yard? That's that's exactly mm. exactly the problem with this Plus, this initial theory. And to answer Devin's question, what what he's saying is that this stuff swelled up, and then they immediately grabbed it and threw it in the glycerin so that it didn't dry back out. Sure, no, that's fine. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking like they're saying, well, like where did the water? come from i don't know i feel like i can explain where water just happened to appear way better than i can explain where meat just happened to appear yeah so because they're saying like it was a cloudless beautiful day and then meat just came raining down from nowhere like i'm way happier to especially living in portland oregon where i know you can look up Mm -hmm. even it's pouring rain on you and you can look up and it's blue sky right above you and somehow it's pouring rain on you it does happen i'm way happier i would think that we would have nicknamed this meat algae a long time ago yeah, you if it, it looked happen like more. meat when it got wet. Well, we don't know that the Crouches were particularly intelligent humans. I, I mean, just in general, it doesn't have to just Maybe be it was the a crouches. bacteria mutation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, if this was something that happened naturally on a regular basis to look like this, because in the descriptions, and, and here's what we haven't talked about so far, is in the descriptions, like, people took the knife to this material and said that it had the striations of muscle with little bits of gristle and fat in it. Like, it looked like you cut it out of a cow or a pig yeah. or a chicken or whatever. Not you, something you would expect from bacteria. Yeah, not gelatinous like you would expect something to be if it was just a cyanobacteria that swelled up at the introduction of moisture. Mm. So, problem think, with yeah. this is right off the bat, that does none of that makes sense. Well, I think another problem with it, too, is that uh, there was reportedly blood on the ground around the, around the chunks of meat. There was some blood. Was it and, blood or was it the like yeah, liquid yeah. that I I struggled with that. Yeah. I mean, go ahead, Joe. I I, no, I, that's, I, that's I left all. it out I mean, because I was like Reportedly people said that there was some there was some red stuff, presumably blood, that on the ground, and so it's like, well, you know, that would come from me, but from this bacteria stuff? Uh, probably not. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Plus, you know, bacteria has been scientifically proven cannot taste like mutton. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Joe has done extensive studies on this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I it's oh. it's a bad theory. I just All wanted right. to. No, no, you just wanted to poke more holes in it. I totally understand. Uh. Let's uh, let's move on to the next theory, which I have titled "Space Meat." I like mm-hmm. this one. I like space meat. Well, you know, it it does microwave quite well. Uh, But (laughs) space meat was one of the very first and honestly funniest explanations from the time that this happened. According to the reports by the quote-unquote experts, the meat was actually from meteors. And I don't know know how we're spelling meteors. (laughs) But uh, it was from meteors that had come into contact with the Earth and fallen from space. Now, have this you got was that a, backwards? I mean, doesn't that doesn't don't they fall from space and then come into contact with the Earth? I think this is. Me- I think with the way I wrote this was I meant it came into contact with the Earth's gravitational pull uh, and I fell see. from I space. See, see. Okay. Um, but 
Uh, you want me to? You want to finish this? Uh, well, uh, yeah, sure. I I just want to clarify. This is a theory from like the 1800s. Oh well. yeah, okay. totally, Great. totally. This is from the 1800s. Okay. Yeah. And my finish next it. explanation is going to make that very clear. Yeah, finish it. <laughs> okay. So the, th- <laughs> the theory goes because there was no bone fragments found in any of this material, it must have been the remnants of an exploded planet of creatures that had come into the path of our planet. And then, of course, that debris field of exploded rock and planet and creature matter Uh was then drawn in and fell to the earth from space uh, because we went through the debris field of that dead world. Wow, and so uh, so it's all aliens. It, it this is literally of, um, it's alien chunks is what was falling from the sky. There must have been a lot of spectacular like meteor crashes around that time too, though, right? Uh, yeah, rock no, meteors, you, not just meteor meteors. If, but, yeah. If, yeah, rock meteors. Yes, yeah. not not me- meteors. Yes, yeah. you're right. If if this were true, there should have been a lot of meteors coming from the sky in general in in the time frame. Hmm. No, there's not. I'm sorry. Simpler thing. Hmm. If this were true, the meat would have been cooked or vaporized. It should have been burned up on re-entry, yes. Yeah, you would like think that. that it would at least be medium well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, that is or not Or like the a case. monster well. <laughs> yeah. Although I guess on the Char. other hand, just to, you know, play the alien's advocate for a minute, we don't know what life looks like on other planets. For all we know, there is some sort of meat that is resistant to high velocity and it, heat. It does yeah. need to be cooked at a thousand degrees for 47 minutes. Yeah, it might become... be. The, the, the surface of their planet is like a thousand degrees. So yeah, this is like a chilly day for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we are actually keeping the meat nice and cool for that. No. Yeah. No. This is this is a, it's fun. It's a fun bunk theory because it is literally from the era 1876 theory before anybody actually knew how space worked mm. or had a good you know better well, understanding of how space worked than than it wasn't as commonplace. I yeah, mean, there were there were people that understood gravity and and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was trying to but clarify. Yeah, so, so there, there were actually alien creatures then, chunks of aliens that came down to earth Th- that's what this is a recounting no. but uh no. no we know that because we know this isn't right because everyone knows that aliens taste like chicken and not mutton well, True. which i mean really is the the bar that i'm working on well it actually makes no sense too because i mean the aliens always eat us we never <laughs> do we ever eat the aliens in the no. movies no 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 no, no. No, we we run from the aliens. We drop the baseball bat when we beat the bad guy. Uh-huh. Yeah, none of this none of this is actually happening. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next theory uh, that and this is also from the time. The next theory is that uh, this is meat products from heaven. Uh, according to this theory, and please don't interrupt me because I wrote this and I am very happy with the way I crafted this sentence. It says God giveth and God taketh, and in this instance preacher that's, that's, and that's the actual entire theory right there yeah because that's ex- entirely what I, I made up because yeah. there were okay I'm, I'm being a bit of a jerk I'm being a bit of a pill about this there were men of the cloth at the time who were saying that this was a bounty provided by God but were they the ones eating it but no. they were not the ones eating it and it was it I mean if this was something that I'm not going to I'm not trying to be a jerk here but if this was something that the Lord was going to give on a regular basis to his flock then we would have seen it on a regular basis and that was not the case well, so it's really I think it's a preacher trying to mm, explain something and not freak his parishioners out maybe Alan and first name redacted crouch um, <laughs> were just so holy and good that they are the only people in history who have ever deserved a bounty like this. You know, I bet. Maybe. Uh, I bet every day they were one, one or both of them were just praying for some good meat. You know, God, I would just give anything, Lord, for you know. And then finally, go, the Lord just said, "I'm so sick of this crap. <laughs> I'm just gonna dump go. some meat on them and say, okay, no more, no more prayers now." Mary's like, Alan, will you just? Will you learn how to shoot yeah. and actually kill us something to eat? That might be what it was. Maybe. Too. Yeah. It's so, hard to say. So that's what I'm thinking. God got fed up. Yeah. Sorry to all of the. Sorry to all of the. That's 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 the theory. 
Sorry to all the Christians we've just... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, we're... I'm making fun. Again, this in the last theory, we're kind of making fun of people of the time. I don't Mm. want to make fun of the faith. I'm making fun of the people of the time. So, we we have more theories that we have to go through. Thank God. Oh, boy. I mean, this would be a short otherwise. So, let's keep going. As I would like to say, let's fry up some fun. Uh, God, you spent the entire almost break talking, thinking about that, didn't you? I did. Totally did. Mm. I admit it. Our next theory is vulture vomit. Yeah. Ew. I like yeah. I know. I feel a little disgusting. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Some people ate that, Steve. What? Uh, you know, I mean, vulture babies eat that crap, so why not people too? Let's just go into the theory. Okay. So, after real scientists got their hands on the collected samples, uh, they figured out that the stuff that had been collected actually had a structure to it that proved that it was from an animal and not from a plant or a bacteria. In other words, like I'd said before, it had that that striation structure that you'll see in in red meat. Yeah, like muscle fibers. Yeah, exactly. And, and these same scientists believe that the material was... Uh, this is a weird combination of locations, but they said it was likely from the lungs of horses or the lungs of infants. Yeah. Human infants. Same thing. Usually about the same size. Nay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they oh. would say that, but I, I, I never actually, like, you know, got myself along and, like, cut it and looked at it, I, w- I wouldn't think it would look like red meat. No, it's it's a weird thing, but but there's there's a guy by the name of Dr. L.D. Kastenbein who looked at the samples and uh, in their state, he decided that the answer was perfectly obvious and... It's lungs, huh? Well, no, not necessarily lungs because uh, the, the lung was the initial the initial people, uh, folks who examined it, actual scientists who examined it said, oh, well, it's got to be lungs. And then this guy gets a hold of it and according to him, he's the one that came up with the whole vulture vomit theory. He says, yes, it, it probably is meat chunks that were from the meat of animals, not necessarily lungs per se. But what's happening is that the meat product was all carried into the sky above the Crouch's homes by vultures because, and this is actually a known thing, uh, vultures are known to regurgitate their meals, uh, uh, a.k.a. barf it back up. Cool. Cool. And they, if they've if they've eaten too much, they will do this. And if they need to fly and they're too heavy, they will do this. Now, to be honest or to be frank about it, they normally do this not because oh God, I ate too much and I just can't fly. It's too much work. No, it's because something has scared them and panicked them. And they can't immediately ascend into the sky. So at that point, then they expel the contents of their stomach to lighten themselves up. That's, it's a defensive uh, mechanism. Yeah, I Handy. thought it was only when they were threatened. Yeah, it's when they're threatened. It's not just a, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that second cheeseburger. I'm just going to let that thing come back up and then we'll we'll go down the street. I mean, that's just not the uh, way it works. I have all- to- scare any vultures, I, I have guess. also heard that it helps to deter birds. I mean... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To no, deter the, any kind of predators. The, the I'm gonna barf on you, dude uh, defense mechanism has been used by vultures and wimpy college dudes for years. Oh, yeah. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I have some problems with this. Oh, oh yeah. Well, it, I mean, there's lots of problems with this yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, not um, really. I, mean, I think it's perfect theory. Oh, well. Um, so, so here's something that we haven't talked about. Um, I read on vultures, and this is not my area of expertise, ornithology. I, mean, I did a bunch of work on the Washington Eagle, but this barfing to get higher thing is not, is not really my area. So I we really... need a vulture expert. I don't think we have one of those yet. No, We're we, going to have I, to expand the podcast. Yeah, yeah, I looked through the list and I didn't see anybody that was a vulture, vulture all. 
Would you call it a vulturologist? Vultologist. Sure. Or just a regular ornithologist with oh, a wow. minor in vultures. You mean with an emphasis in vultures? Emphasis. Yes. Emphasis. Mm-hmm. That's a better I'd way I'd call to them say a vultologist. <laughs> vultologist. Uh, Vult- that doesn't no. yeah. into me. Vultologist. Um, but no, the point is, I, I don't really know that they just do this so that they can ascend higher into the sky. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm only at 4,000 feet, but I want to get to 5,000, so let me herk up my glass. Everything I've ever understood about vultures is that they only do it as like a fight or flight mm-hmm. mechanism, not yeah. like a just because they want to fly higher. You would think, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're actually flying, it, you wouldn't want to be doing it because you'd like, you know, you're, you've got wind, you've got wind speed, you know, you, and you, you hurl and all that crap's going to go right in your eyes. And all <laughs> stuff. Well, more than yeah. that, I mean, like your your primary mechanism as an animal is to survive right and yeah. if you can keep your energy source aka food yeah, you in your body you'd yeah. like to hang on to that yeah. and escape or flying. yeah but if if the choice is i mean humans do this too like in in we you see marathoners do this sometimes in in extreme exertion situations mm-hmm. bodies do sometimes just expel expel in any way they possibly can um and so you know it's i think it's that same thing where it's like if they are in severe danger, they will do this because it helps them get away. But other than that, well, if there's no reason. A little too hard, maybe. You know? Yeah. I, I'm actually. I'm really glad is that whenever I've run and I've run really hard, I've not actually experienced that e- expulsion. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad that I've never had to do yeah. that. Yeah. There have been a few times when I've been working out, I've really pushed it a little too far, and I felt I had not even puked, but mm. I, I felt kind of nauseous. Oh, yeah, no, so, last yeah. weekend's race, I was really sad that I had ate that pesto wrap. I was like, for oh, the first mile and a half, yeah. like that was the worst thing I ever did. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But so it's yeah. So I don't know that they would necessarily do that to attain more altitude. But let's ignore that for the moment. Let's just talk about the herking ability of vultures because it is rather epic. I also wonder. Sorry, just to derail yeah, yeah, you for yeah, a no, second. No. I also wonder like how many.